Hello, I'm Mario, and today I'm gonna get some work done on my Chevy Colorado. I'm gonna have a couple leaf springs added to the rear axle. I've had this Chevy Colorado for about six months now. I bought it new, it's a WT model, and I anticipate I'm going to need the suspension worked on, and I wanna kind of take it step by step. I don't wanna have too much work done at one point. So the idea today is to add two leaf springs on each side, and instead of adding just a regular add a leaf, like one leaf spring out of a kit, I'm gonna have BETS, that's B-E-T-T-S, I'm gonna have them do some work on the rear axle for me. And the idea is to not make it too rigid, but be able to support the weight of the travel trailer that I have, and also a good amount of payload. So in essence, this truck is gonna be dedicated to have payload in it. And so that's where adding the leaf spring makes sense, at least in my mind. And then from there, I can take a look at if I'm gonna have issues with brake lines, if I'm gonna have issues with uh, travel on the stock shocks. Um, further down the road, we'll have to take a look at what's going on with the front suspension. And so what I'm gonna do is, before I get over to Betts, I'm gonna do it over in uh, San Leandro. They have another place in Fresno where they actually make the leaf springs. But I'm heading over to San Leandro, and right before I get there, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and fill up the gas tank, and then I'm going to go ahead and take some measurements and see where I'm sitting at stock. I already have a pretty good idea. Essentially, this sits a little bit lower than what a ZR2 model of the Colorado would sit at. And what I wanna see is how much, uh, how much lift I get out of the rear axle, and then also compare those measurements for when I have a payload. After pulling the travel trailer and driving in hills with the bed of the truck loaded down pretty good, I have a pretty good idea of what the stock pickup truck feels like and with the stock suspension there's a little bit of sway back and forth so i want a little more rigidity when i'm hauling things like a payload in the bed or pulling a travel trailer and so the idea is to go to bets and they're going to form they're going to heat up and form the leaf spring to the existing stock leaf spring pack some options might be to replace the entire leaf spring pack. I don't know that I wanna spend the money on that right now. As I mentioned, I wanna take baby steps forward. I don't wanna make a whole bunch of changes all at once. Hopefully I can get these leaf springs on and not have to do anything else to the brake lines or anything and, and at least be able to drive around with a decent load. Something that the leaf springs, or at least adding leaf springs to the existing leaf pack is not going to do, it's not going to increase the rated payload or the rated gross weight of the vehicle itself. So the, the registered gross combined weight rating, any of those numbers, adding leaf springs is not going to change any of that. But what it will allow me to do is experience a smoother better ride while the truck is loaded down so the objective here is simply to have a better drive experience with a payload in order to get consistent numbers as far as when i'm measuring the suspension i have the truck totally empty and then i'm going to go ahead and top off the fuel so this way i'll have some benchmark that I can depend on as far as how much the suspension is sagging. Okay, so I'm topped off and I have about a mile to go to the shop and about a half hour to get there.
and here we are okay so I'm just gonna go ahead as I mentioned I'm early I'm like about a half hour before this place even opens but I do have an appointment and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to park here and see if I can't get some of those measurements uh, that I'm concerned about and then later on after they do the spring I'll have a chance to share those measurements with well suspension people in the future if I need to do further adjustments and I really do and I don't think this is going to be uh, a resolution to all of my issues but I don't know that I've discovered all of the uh, potential issues that I may have uh, as I start really using the truck so anyway first step let's get the measurements okay, so first measurement I want to do is just basically it's from the ground up to the top of the fender here so let's do that That was the passenger side and there is a large difference over here on the driver's side. Looks like the driver's side is 36 and a half inches. And over here maybe 37 and 3 8 from the leading edge of the axle just in front of the factory bumps I measured between the leaf spring and the uh, frame so on the on the passenger side I got 8 inches and then on the other side it's 7 and 3 quarters so there's definitely a variance here so I was able to drop off the truck and hopefully I'll be able to pick it up the same day before they close at five o'clock. So it's first thing in the morning and I'm thinking they'll be able to get it done. So I'm pretty excited. Now I'm just gonna head home and uh, well, wait for them to call. Okay, so I'm back in my truck. They did the work for me, that's great. I'm really excited about it. So I took a quick look at things and I don't know if this guy's trying to back up here. Let me see if I can get around. So I took a quick look at stuff and essentially what they've done is they've added two leaf springs on each side and uh, I don't know exactly the gauge I, I think it's just like what would normally be their stock as far as the thickness but they're two and a half inch wide leaf springs the way I understand it so I'll go back over all the numbers but when I get a chance to get back and and take a look at everything but essentially what it looks like I probably got about two inches worth of lift on the rear axle so that's that's good as long as that doesn't um, adversely affect the stock shocks so we'll have to see how things pan out and hopefully I'll have a chance to hook up to the travel trailer here and then we'll actually get a comparison right now I'm just gonna drive home it's in traffic so I won't really get a really good idea on the uh, you know on what the truck feels like empty uh, essentially it's gonna handle terribly <laughs> when it's empty it's not gonna handle well at all I jumped up and down on it it's definitely a lot stiffer and uh, the brake lines I looked at the brake lines those all seem like they're gonna be doing perfectly fine everything looks good from what I can tell now it's just a matter of hooking up the uh, trailer loading some cargo in the in the bed and driving through some hills you know to kind of see how things handle so i'm pretty excited about it everything looks really good and uh yeah we'll go over the measurements here in a bit i hope there's enough light to get this taken care of it's sun setting fast i wanted to get out of there before the traffic hit really hard so at any rate let's see what we got here i don't know that's it's like 30, 39 and an eighth. Let's see, here we go. It's about, it's about 39 and an eighth. That's the passenger side. So the driver's side was a little bit shorter last time around. Yeah, 
I'm seeing 38 and a quarter there. Okay, so I'm over here on the passenger side and the leaf spring to the frame. I want to say eight and seven eighths. So I'm, I'm over here on the driver's side and that looks like eight and three quarters. So on the way home, I didn't really have a chance to really test it out. It is empty. I did add fuel for the for this round of measurements. So the, it's topped off. I added a gallon and a half. And then, um, but at any rate, as far as the ride when it was empty, it was, um, it wasn't that bad. Um, it seemed still a little bit pliable. So it definitely rides a lot stiffer like a, like you would expect a, a, a three quarter ton pickup truck to, to ride, you know, you expect it to be kind of stiff until you put something in the bed. So that's kind of a similar feel that I'm that I'm getting out of this, you know. So if, if I was driving across the bridge with a lot of uh, um, expansion joints, um, that could probably become tiresome. But it, it it actually wasn't that bad. The next step then is to figure out how this thing handles when uh, when we have a trailer on it and we got some cargo on it. But anyway, look at that. I think they did a pretty good job. Well, I got the trailer hooked up, got my camping gear loaded in here, and I'm heading off to the lake. I've had a, a few chances to drive around with the, uh, well, empty with the pickup truck, and then also pulling the trailer. I have to say it's not bad at all. I'm, I mean, there's been a huge improvement, and I just had to do a brake check right there. That worked out pretty good. So there's been a huge improvement in the performance overall. Um, now. I have adjust, made some adjustments to the um, weight distribution hitch, but as far as the leaf spring, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Um, now, the drawback is I have literally a two inch lift on the rear axle and nothing on the front. As it is with these Colorados, they, um, you know, they already have a rake to it where the front end is a little bit lower. And the idea behind that is so that when you put cargo in, it's not, you know, it's leveled out and you're not pointing the, the headlights up into the sky. So I expected as much. And so I'm, I'm overall, I'm, I'm really pleased with the, uh, with what's going on. So I, I'm heading up to the hills. I'm gonna get some more, um, I'm gonna get a chance to take a few turns. It's nothing too dramatic, but, uh, you know, when I get to the campground, I'll give you guys, a, you know, an update. So, see you in a minute. All right, well, I made it into camp and drove up and through that windy section up and over the hill. And everything felt great. And I had concerns that the performance improvements that I was feeling as I was driving had a direct correlation with the adjustments I did to the weight distribution hitch. And what I mean by that is the weight distribution hitch was initially uh, set up by the dealer. So I was unsure what they did and how they came to the adjustments that they did. And then so when I went through it, I was concerned that there was going to be some variance there. And in essence, I ran through all the numbers. I did a scale. I looked at everything. And even though I have put more pressure on the spring bar, it seems that uh, there's really not much distinction between the performance of the weight distribution hitch from the adjustments I did compared to the adjustments that the dealer did. Now, you know, this is all of a moving target here, but as best as I can tell, all of the performance enhancements that I was feeling while I was driving really are due to the leaf spring additions that I did. So I'm very happy with 
the leaf springs. I guess that's really the takeaway here. So by now it's probably obvious, maybe painfully so, that I'm trying to do as much of a control study as possible. And in that spirit, um, I will mention that I tried to put as much weight in the bed of the truck as possible to uh, max out that axle. And it turns out that I did. I did just that. There's still room for a few hundred pounds. Um, but as far as the uh, maximum tongue weight and maximum uh, axle weight rating, I got pretty darn close. Uh, the trailer still has a lot of room, a uh, thousand pounds or more. And then in conclusion, and I think I've already expressed this, I'm just really happy with what's, uh, what I've accomplished with adding these leaf springs. And, uh, you know, it's a uh, little over $1,500 with tax and everything invested. And um, it's reversible. I can, I can remove one of the leaf springs or all of the leaf springs. Um, I, I should be able to change out the rear shocks if needed. So I don't really feel that I've painted myself into a corner by spending this money. Um, you know, I'm, maybe at worst I've thrown some of that money away but I'm all so I've achieved the short-term goal and I think that by taking this step it's going to allow me to uh to move around so it gives me that wiggle room so that I can implement these other uh modifications that I intend to do to the truck you know I want to go camping I want to go explore and so I think I'm on the right track here thanks for watching and Tune in for the other episodes because, like I said, I, I'm i hoping that this is just the beginning of a very, uh, very long journey on modifications. Thanks.